Good morning. So good to see you all of you back. I say this is actually like a five day boot boot camp. For these five days, we'll be learning those topics which are actually the foundation, actually so important that they will be helpful to you in almost in every subject. And and because it is like a boot camp, it won't be easy. You have to really give your heart and soul for this as we'll be having two sessions. So that's why I have named it as say day one would be like day one A and day one B. Similarly, day two, three, four, five, right? And for first two, first three days, that is 2A, 2B, 3A and 3B, we'll be talking about neurophysiology, right? That would be neurophysiology. And day four and day five, that's where we'll be talking about, it looks like six, but it is five. Who knows, we might have to go on the sixth day. Okay, so but over here we'll be talking about immunity and all those tricky things that how exactly those immunoglobulins and interleukins and their activation and T cell and B cell, everything will fall into its correct place. But I know this is your vacation, right? Till 18th there is vacation. So that secret is known to me. So you do have enough time to work on it. So revise it properly. You'll really enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. And now, like a complete nice discipline, say you'll send any of the message in the post, right? You'll send any message in the chat only when you really want to ask something, right? Otherwise, say, you all have been so good, so disciplined, really like it. But in between, because it happens like there are multiple screens, right? I'll be I'll be showing you even say just in one or two days, I'll you'll be happy to see something more, right? Something more in the form of graphics, something more in the form of your understanding, you'll be happy with it. But because there are multiple screens, so when whenever something is written, so it distracts me slightly, right? So once, yeah, good morning all of you and now bus 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 right until 18 there are holidays I, I know that right so so it's like now don't type anything just focus right learn the subject here we start <clears throat> so when we talk about brain right this is what I used to feel like means the most trickiest thing and it always creates that impression that it is just this much space and what it is doing. As I was reading few of the books not related to medical, <clears throat> and I'll keep on telling you the names of, of those books also. Recently, I came across one very good book on the altered state. In fact, I, I, I'll be trying to finish that, that book by tomorrow. Right? It's about 250 pages book and it is on altered state. Right now, if I say anything about it, it would be an injustice as I have read only 40 pages. So let me finish the book. But in those 40 pages and, and the, uh, at high speed skimming when I went through the entire book, it is telling about that there are four methods by which one can go into the altered state and altered state is like within few days only you can reach to that level of focus and concentration so that even while asleep, even when you are in sleep, still you are studying, right? It's a, it's a very interesting thing, right? So I'll talk about it. As soon as I'll finish the book, right, I'll spare about five, seven minutes on that and we'll discuss about it. What I'll do is I'll, I'll give you the juice of it so that you don't have to spend those hours for studying 250 plus pages but I'll, I'll give you the name also of that book so that in case you're interested you can surely go ahead with it okay so talking about brain 
when we say brain, think it like that brain is a hardware and your mind is a software. Right? Your mind is a software. In anatomy, we'll be learning about brain. Today, it's physiology. So, we'll be talking about mind. Right? So, the way in computers we say that there are hard disk which is for storage of information. There is a CPU which will be processing the whole thing. Right? There are gates which will be communicating with various sections. Right? Then there are input devices, there are output devices. And then in case if you want a higher level of processing, so you have got even the GPUs, the graphic processing unit. Right? And, and all those graphic processing units, why they are needed? Because they are needed for some special purpose. And that special purpose could be like you, you want to go for a very high speed editing with very high frame rate. You want to capture those those frames from some other input devices from let's say your 4k camera which is giving say 60 frames per second now that is pretty high so in that case your computer might not be able to say absorb it at that high rate so that's why you need a special device that is what is called as the capturing devices right similarly you want to go for the sound which is like stereo in case of laptop but you want to go for 7.1 right with atmos and dolby nr so, in all such cases, you will be requiring a special hardware. Say 10 times thank you to God because he has put all those hardware into your skull right from the beginning. So, you will be surprised that when you come across many of the technologies, those technologies and those systems, they are already pre-built into your brain. The trouble is we don't know how to use it or we don't use it. So, when we learn physiology, Physiology is such an amazing thing when I know that, okay, it is the temporal lobe which will be converting this into memory for the long term chain. Actually, you start talking to your to your temporal lobe and and say if you re read the book of Arnold Schwarzenegger, what he said is that whenever you do exercise, you talk to that muscle. Trust me, when you talk to that muscle it will give you much better performance because then your entire focus is on that muscle. Similarly, whenever you come across a difficult topic, if you understand next one hour session properly, you'll actually start talking to your brain and you'll see, you'll be surprised by your performance. It would be so good because then that subject, you will fall in love with that subject. You'll fall in love with that subject. And when you fall in love, right that time scale <clears throat> it evaporates right i need not say more to you but when you are with your boyfriend or girlfriend right or with someone whom you love so much right even if you have spent two hours with him or her you never feel like oh it's two hours you feel just two minutes five minutes right so time is a relative factor and the reverse way some boring relative when comes to our place and then we feel that we will go when we right? And every five minutes we watch the clock. Okay, it's been five minutes. We feel like it has been one hour. Right? We are so bored. So time is a relative factor. Okay? All right. You know, yesterday I got a call from one of my students. She said, sir, when will you be teaching those eight, eight bones? I said, why? She said, someone asked me. I said, fine, wait, it will come. <laughs> okay. All right. So here is, we start with our nervous system. Everything, whatsoever is done, they are the master control. That is the master control. It is your brain which is handling all these things. But then let's divide it into some sections so that it will give us clarity. Because we don't want only to be fascinated by the nervous system, but we really want to improve those brains who have got some problems. That means I am talking about the diagnosis, right? Whenever any of the diseases which is related to nervous system, so you should be able to diagnose it also very effectively. That's the reason that in today's session, you'll find that there are several topics, but all those topics, they are 
quite basic. In other words, I am trying to teach you just half of the alphabets today. And these alphabets, they will be creating a poetry tomorrow, right? And that poetry would be nothing but it would be a sort of a complete autonomic nervous system. Okay, so here is CNS, central nervous system. Name itself tells that it is centrally, so it is like our hardware would be brain and spinal cord right brain and spinal cord but then there is something like pns peripheral nervous system and that's what we divide into to somatic and autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system somatic is voluntary autonomic nervous system is not voluntary it is autonomic it is automatic it will be handling the things by itself and we divide it into sympathetic and parasympathetic. This part was pretty easy, right? The confusion comes when actually it is asked about that what are gray rami communicants, what are white rami communicants, what are dorsal root ganglia, periganglionic, postganglionic, prevertebral ganglia. There comes the trouble. And then on top of it, when it is said that sympathetic change, right? All those things when they keep on adding, it creates confusion. And when we study, say, anatomy, so at that time, all the organs, especially when you are studying abdomen, straight away, it will they'll start telling that it is coming from these ganglia, that ganglia, fibers from sympathetic fibers from this and parasympathetic from this, creates absolute confusion. It becomes impossible to remember also. And when it comes to diagnosis, when it comes to medical medicine, in medicine, it is taken for granted that you know these things so straight away the diseases and their descriptions will start from that level. So that's the reason this entire session is planned. For these three days, right, we'll be touching every aspect of neurophysiology which will be helpful to you in your pharmac, medicine, everything. Will we be able to complete entire neurophysiology? Obviously not. No, because if... if I can go at that pace, in that case, so I can finish your entire MBBS in six months, right? So we won't be able to touch some of the functions like say sleep or or, or say vision or earring, ear, right? Hearing. No, we, we won't be touching because these are the special senses. But if you understand this, obviously those things will become easier. Trust me, we'll cover that part also because we have time. But in the initial stage, that is for this month, only those topics where we said that I want your foundation super strong. Okay. So today we will not be worrying much about sympathetic and parasympathetic because whatever is needed to understand that is what we will be learning today. And tomorrow completely dedicated to sympathetic and parasympathetic. And take my word for it, by the end of tomorrow's session, right, None of you will be having any doubt about what are these receptors, how they work, what are all those neurotransmitters, why it happens. Everything would be crystal clear and it is like a story. It is like a story. You don't have to stress yourself, right? It's a very funny story. Okay. So here is our brain. And in brain, and, and my, my memory is very bad, right? So that's why right from the beginning, whether whether it was IT or it was medical, I always try to figure out an easy way to remember so that I don't forget. So very much confused thing, afferent and efferent. And I kept on thinking that afferent and efferent. So easy way, brain is super boss. So brain would say whosoever comes to me. So things arriving to brain, they are afferent. And things exiting from, from brain, they are efferent, right? But, so even now when I go to airport, whenever I see arrival, so I see, okay, so these are like afferent roads or afferent tracks. Afferent are sensory. Obviously, because things are coming to brain, so over here, there would be skin, right? Easiest to understand skin and that is sending sensation right in fact sensations they are from entire body 
So there'll be some sensations which will be related to skins. There'll be some sensations which are related to specific organs. So we'll talk about those organs that there are stretch receptors, there are temperature receptors, there are touch receptors. So in other words, in simple language, they are receptors. And how the receptor is? Receptor means what? What is receptor? Receptor is who? What means again? Who receives? And what he is receiving? It is purely like for what purpose he is assigned. So in any of the mission, right, when an officer is posted and he is said that, okay, check room number four. Right? You must have seen in many of the serials. Right? When they check room number four, what they say? If there is nothing, everything is fine. They say clear. This means what? This means that let's say in your mission, you have deployed four officers and there are room number one, two, three, four. And let's pick up the name. Let's say officer Prasoon. Right? When I hear his voice clear. So that means I know that now room number one is clear. When officer Neha right? She says clear. That means room number two is clear. Now, let's say Rishikesh, officer three, right? I don't hear anything from him. It means there is something. There is something wrong. But same style, same way these receptors are. They are said that, okay, receptor, your function is to sense touch, then you don't worry about if there is increase in temperature or decrease in temperature. Don't worry about it. So in such cases, that receptor when he tells, yes, I am I'm, I'm sending you something, what receptor would send? Receptor has got no language. Entire brain is working on only one language and that is, that is, that is, any idea? All brain, all spinal cord, all nerves, all muscles, they just talk of one language. What's that language? What's that language? Any idea? Yes, I'm waiting. You can type. That's why I'm keeping the chat on. Sensation. Okay. Any idea comes to your mind, do write it. Right? I'm reading all the answers. Do write it. Say it happens like if you are right, you feel ki yes, I am born smart, right? And if you are wrong, you feel ki aray yar itna bhi samaj nahi aaya, right? So in both the cases, your emotions are involved. You'll always remember, okay? So answers are coming up: sensation, hormones, nerve impulse, chemicals, stimuli, electric signal, signals, electric impulse, receptors, okay? Electric impulse, okay? Codon, very <laughs> style choline, brain impulse, neurotransmitters, signals, signals, impulse. Okay, let's go with majority. Signals, impulse, electrical activity, electrical activity. Yeah, and, and as we go into more depth, yes, there would be so many other things. But the basic foundation of entire thing is the current. We work on the principle of current. And that current is nothing but, but action potential. The word itself is there. Action, right? Action. So it works. So that is action potential. It means if we have said that touch receptor, touch receptor won't be say, telling some amazing language, right? So it never sings that song, touch me, touch me, right? It will simply send that action potential. That, But when it is from, say, Officer Neha, she said, clear, so her voice is telling me that that room too is clear. Yeah, that's okay. Now you can stop typing. I, I got it. Good. Good. So, right, that's how it goes. When there is, say, thermal receptor who is talking about temperature. So if the message is heard from Officer Rishikesh, clear, that means that room number three is clear. But this is how everything works. So brain is simply sitting silently and receiving and hearing just clear from all those officers. Right? Because they have been deployed for specific purpose. Now it's like officer Rishikesh need not worry about what's going in room number four. No. <clears throat> no. It means touch receptor won't be thinking that should I go for that stretching also? No. He is meant for this particular section. Right? So it means it is this action potential. Now, if there are action potential, 
what if now create a confusion what if there is a fourth officer and say officer amzad here is officer amzad by any means what would happen if the voice of officer amzad and officer rishikesh is absolutely same trouble now who has said clear difficult you won't be able to perceive that who is sending you the message so that means it is necessary to have a different voice so same way over here it means every fiber every piece of information whatsoever is carried it is carried on a specific track and it will land into the brain on specific area bus so that brain has got no confusion this is the reason you must have seen that in brain in brain right when the representation comes so hands they are having big area represented on the cerebral cortex this is cerebrum right cerebrum again i was i was so very dull student right and uh, i used to even confuse between way back when right when i was kid so i used to confuse between cerebrum and cerebellum right i used to con confuse between that right that chota dimag to was very problematic so i thought that brahm means what brahma brahma means bhagwan bhagwan is always bigger right so bas now then there is no confusion it means that cerebrum is a big brain is a giant one okay so over here you'll see that our hands and our face they are given huge area back to back is to just like a patla strip just a small area reason your hands are so sensitive it has it has got so many features so many functions similarly your face your face is giving millions and millions of expressions true so that's why they are given specific area and from this the entire science of micro expressionism came into picture micro expressionism this is that science which is considered as super powerful for lie if to, to detect a lie if someone is lying because every muscle of your face is connected with your brain very precisely so if you are interrogating someone and you start shooting that person with 100 fps camera 100 frames per second and when the question is asked you go roll frame by brain frame by frame and you will find that as soon as the question is asked there was some twitch in his eyes there was some movement in his orbicularis oris that is the muscles which are surrounding the mouth right there was some twitch in the cheek bone right cheek muscles all those minor movements they carry a specific meaning so that is what is called as the micro expressionism these are very fine very small muscle twitch but those muscle twitch they will carry a meaning reason same brain is giving a large portion to hands and face that's why in robotics it is very difficult to create a hand who can receive a rose and who can punch right because that those servo motors they will be handling both the things similarly so that's the reason we say that brain and spinal cord they are working on the principle of say that action potential in fact everyone right so the building block let's go down to the basics and that is the building block when we are constructing a building our brick is called as the building block so over here it is our neuron which is a building block now if we go into the depth of neuron it has got a very nice very nice structure and this structure is something like this this is cell body right there is nucleus there is cell body and see normally this nucleus is in center it means if anything will go wrong to this 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 cell body now this nucleus will be pushed on one side we'll be learning about it in depth but because at this point we are talking about nucleus so this is what is called as central nucleus i really want you to learn one new word it is centric right it is centric 
Now, when it will go on one side, uh, wait, this is, wait, 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 uh, let me write, this is centric, right? Deliberately, I wrote it with white color. Okay, when this nucleus is pushed, is, is pushed on one side, right? When it is pushed on one side, so this means it is error. So when it is error, so it is, error is created and it is called as eccentric, right? So it is eccentric because when it goes on one side, it is the error. There is some problem. So this is the error which is created by any of the process which gives eccentric nucleus. So eccentric means off-center. Just to know about it, this happens when this poor fellow is damaged, when he is injured. So when he is injured, this nucleus, it is pushed on one side. Okay. So here it is the cell body and these are, this is called as the exon. This one, this, this thing is exon. And here are the, these are called as the dendrites. Right? Yes, it is necessary to remember these names. So cell body name was easy. Right? And exon means axis. So that also is making the sense. And dendrite means branches. Right? Dendrite means branches. So this is, to remember, you can remember it like dendrites. Right, so dendrites, or they are like branches, right? Dendrites, branches. So they are branches. Oh, oh. I'm highlighting only the keywords. So when you are, if you are taking notes, so you have to just write all these keywords. The rest of the things will fall in its place automatically. Right? So every day we'll do keep on doing this. This is also written in the form of brain mapping only, right? Building block, then that is the neuron, and then you are drawing. We are not writing any of the sentences. So that's the beauty of this super reading method or the brain mapping in which you don't have to write long sentences, only the keywords. All our, our training, entire training will be like this only. Whether it is anatomy, physiology, pharmac, surgery, medicine, gynec, anything, will be going like this only okay now say you are a medical student so this much to anyone can understand so how are you different let's add let's give some some importance to us right and we say that see this is some covering and this covering this covering is called as the myelin Right? It is called as the myelin. So anything which is having myelin is called as myelinated. And obviously, if it is not there, then non-myelinated. So these myelins, right, they are special structure. And what's their function? They increase conduction speed. They increase conduction speed. So that gives us the idea that, well, Action potential to is already working, right? Things are going. But well, they are not that fast. It is the myelin which adds the speed. Okay, so we learnt this important aspect. So in case if myelin is destroyed, then, then it would lead to all those diseases in which the movements are sluggish. Movements are slow, right? And such, yeah. Come back to center? Well, interesting question. After the problem is cured, does nucleus come back to center? Well, that depends upon how much is the injury, right? So that's why we'll be talking about that injury part also. Today only we'll be discussing about it. And yes, we'll be go we are about to go into the depth of brain and spinal cord. Yes, Pratik. Okay, so one thing is clear. So in case if myelin is having any problem, it will lead to this trouble speed would be decreased. So everything will be slow, everything will be sluggish, so sluggish, right? So that's what is happening. Let's go into more detail. 
well this is like official figure okay so in this yes cell body and also soma is not name of any girl right it is soma means it is cell body right it's other name and and these are the dendrites well they receive everything these are the axon we talked about it they pass messages away from the cell body to other neurons group this 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 action potential we talked about myelin sheath because this myelin right that is what is improving the conduction and these are the terminal branches and these terminal branches they are connected with dendrites of other neuron and in between so in between it would be something like this that it will go like this and then there is another dendrite which is going and in between communication between both of them right it is neurotransmitter that's right nodes of Ranvier, right that's right so this is neuro neurotransmitter neurotransmitter which will which is like a chemical so someone wrote that chemicals yes very true right these are the chemicals these are the specific chemicals which will be released over here so when we'll talk about pharmacology if we stop this neurotransmitter if we stop this chemical done there won't be any communication between both of them right and then we give some name to it we say synapse because every time it doesn't look good right it doesn't look good to say that now we are stopping the chemical which is released between one fiber that is the terminal fiber of one and the second one right we, it doesn't look good so when we say synapse it it gives us the complete purpose right so these cell bodies now comes the concept a very vital concept what is nucleus and what is ganglion these two words they'll keep on coming keep on coming we talk about that okay these are the nuclei in the brain right and these are the ganglion which are spread across the entire body think of that these cell bodies only we are talking about only cell bodies so group of cell bodies when they are into the brain into the cns right into the brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord they are called as nucleus so there would be something like nucleus spinosum nucleus tectosus so all those nucleus but it means nucleus word came it is in the spinal cord or in the brain it's finish and that's where all those cell bodies they are keeping their head together they are making a round table conference and they are about to take some decision because so many cell bodies are there so they are important they'll be taking some decision right so you can say this is their headquarter and then there are some offshore branches so these headquarters will be sending messages to those offshore branches and they'll say okay, okay you take the decision and proceed for this operation so those outside the cns where again all those cell bodies they are making head to head a meeting right that's what is called as the ganglion simple right there is structurally they both are same so these neuron cell bodies have got this importance okay so here it is right our small nucleus and this cell body right and then these are the myelin sheath and that's also called as the nodes of Ranvier right nodes of Ranvier and then these are the terminal branches right these are the terminal branches and these are the dendrites or bendrites branches okay and here is our synapse right that's what is synapse synapse let's go into more detail synapse is where there would be the communication between both of them and that is neurotransmitter and current is needed to release it yes that's the thing so we have got different type of neurotransmitters 
one neurotransmitter is like it will say it will boost yes yes come on right let's fight and then that sound from the soul comes that come on don't fight right he is much powerful than you he'll kill you better run away right so there are different type of neurotransmitters right sometimes we are so brave hearted sometimes we are so emotional all the game is of these neurotransmitters right and then these are what these are receptors so now onwards instead of writing this entire thing r e c e p t o r right was the last time we are writing receptor like this now onwards we'll write r like this right receptors like this and my it students right i have to shift my brain because over there when i write r so that means it is the router router is someone who is communicating between one network to another network you are all the internets they are working on the basis of a router okay so here it is these are the synapses right these are all the various types of receptors so many types of receptors are there tomorrow we'll be discussing all of them where are they present how exactly they function okay now if we say that this is a ganglion right where it is wherever now this there are several ganglion in the body but we just focus on that this is a ganglion ganglion itself means that this is not in the cns it is outside the cns right so it is outside it is in the outside and any of the fiber which is before that so it is pre ganglionic fiber right it is pre ganglionic and anything which is after it is post ganglionic right so so no big rocket science pre and post so this part is also very clear okay myelin sheath myelin sheath what we were talking about it is protective sure it is protective right it develops from now that development is different right where are you present so that's why i i kept that uh, that answer on halt right that presence of myelin in brain and in the nerves say in case of cns it develops from oligodendrocytes right oligodendrocytes at this point if you are making any notes you have to write this oligodendrocyte as put a star on it and as per our promise today when you go to sleep even if you don't read anything you will definitely reading definitely be watching oligodendrocytes right oligodendrocytes yeah that's right they are support cells but say i am talking in that reference that i was told that many of the students they are just in first mbbs right it is just this is like their initial classes so yes we do have we do have senior students also with us but at times means i'm sorry but right i have to say explain things with that reference those who have heard this word for the first time right so in case if it happens like you might be knowing the answer awesome right but that's oligodendrocytes it is in cns and these are schwann cells right remember it like swan that hunts right they are they are like those it looks like dino cell right it doesn't look like swan now it looks like swan okay so these are like schwann cells that is in pns peripheral nervous system no 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 need to delete the message that's okay <laughs> that's completely okay so no worries okay right so these are the two words today when you go to sleep right at least keep them 
in your mind that you have to see these words and this is the image what was told was very right right this oligodendrocytes they are so important amazing support is what is given to them and regarding this schwann cell this schwann cell to they'll keep on developing round and round and round and round and round right like this 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 that's how they develop right so they actually form that entire sheath okay there are other glial cells glial cells well well what are they but we use the word other right so this means we are talking about this cns oh that means our logic now starts developing that these oligodendrocytes they are also a type of glial cells and what are they so these are astrocyte this astro word is very fascinating right astro they are like soldiers right they support and they fight that's good that's good so now it makes sense if you close our eyes right those astronauts right they also they are like soldiers so these are the astrocytes visualize it right as if they are astro astronauts moving on to one very fine concept blood brain barrier now see everything is connected we talked about astrocyte right astrocytes they were what soldiers soldiers they were fighters they were supporters so where would they like to give a support they said we would like to give a support anything and everything can come from brain we can't permit everything to enter into our territory because brain is master brain is a central headquarter everything is so vital over here so all these astrocytes right they will be standing like this right they will be standing like this exactly the way when high security areas right all those commandos they are standing over there same style right and blood anything can come from blood right those bacteria and everything right they they they'll try to enter into this area right and these are the astrocytes now it makes complete sense that astrocytes they support and they fight and they fight and that is between blood brain barrier now this is this barrier very strong well it is made up of endothelial cells what are these endothelial cells see in endothelial cells if you have gone if you were present into that uh, is, i'm sorry uh, what is ganglion sure 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 i'll i'll come to that right just i finish this point and i'll come to that ganglion part so where was i yeah so in that histology we talked about that all these blood vessels right they are lined by these endothelial cells in fact in embryology we'll be discussing it in more depth that what really happens to these cells and how they develop etc but in simple words it is the lining it is the lining which is lying between blood and barrier and this brain right it is between blood and brain now normally these endothelial cells right their gates they are very weak right they are their gates now it is not like a bullet right yeah this is epithelium of blood cells now it is not like a bullet that the, those those viruses and bacteria they'll pass through and through this cell no no it they'll always try to sneak in through that junction through that junction when they try to go in between via that junction right and then what if we make those gates properly tight that's what is called as the tight junction at least here i say thank to that person who gave such logical name right otherwise here also they could have given some craziest name but over here thank god the name is tight junction right simple tight junction and from tight junction it reminds me that uh, what name should give i give to 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 something when things are passing so easily from here to here and where is it present 
where is such thing present from one cell to second cell things are going easily right they are going easily so what is that that is that is called yeah these are also called as occluding junction but what about this when things are going from one side to other side very easily right channels are those it is called as gap junction right gap junction see here also that person was they must be in such a good mood right so they are called as gap junction and where do you see these gap junctions i'll give you the hint gap junctions are present in those area where things should be working as as one unit right they can't say that okay only few fibers will come entire thing should be working as one unit so that is that is where do you see those such things where do you see those gap junctions they are present in exactly heart right so now i can draw the heart like this okay so they are present in heart so now gap junction and tight junctions both good okay so here is epithelial cell they line the capillaries in the brain right and it is a super selective membrane super selective it will say no to bacteria and water oxygen glucose they are to vital right they are the survivors so they are invited no problems they come bacteria they don't and here is our smart brain right and how do we understand it let's see this from every angle every aspect that's the cerebrum now see this entire brain in, is thrown into folds so that is called as the sulci and gyri sulcus and gyrus prominence and the depth mountains and valleys right function function is it increases surface area it increases surface area right so surface area is increased now there are few names the easiest would be the frontal one right that is the frontal one this is frontal so it is in front uh, okay 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 now you should be able to see it and let me unzoom slightly so it would be better so that's the frontal lobe frontal lobe is okay but what it does f for yeah, it is for fine decisions right it is for fine decisions we'll first try to understand all the lobes very grossly then we'll be going into depth so frontal is for fine decisions or also call as the executive decisions executive decisions whenever you are taking some important decisions it is your frontal lobe which is very very vital okay then the parietal so here it is right that's parietal right that's parietal right frontal was this front was frontal this is side is temporal that is uh, that is parietal and the back in the back right that is occipital these are the four lobes so now we are talking about that top one right they are the parietal parietal processes position right how musical the things are parietal processes position you close your eyes and and if i say that that's your hand right and i make your hand like this like this right will you be able to decipher it ah uh, well well very interesting question ah uh, puja i'll come back to that question right just give me few moments so in in parietal 
right? If I move your hand from this position to let's say this position and I tell you that you keep your eyes closed, will you be able to judge it that my hand position has changed, has been changed? Yes, you will be because your joints, your joints there are every joint, right? Every joint is sending the message to the brain that, okay, parietal, this is the new input and parietal would process it and will say, okay, this is the new position. So parietal processes position, add one thing in 3D. Yes, obviously it has to be in 3D. It cannot be in 2D, right? Because we move in any of the position that is 3D. So this is through. So we have understood that frontal is for fine decision, parietal it processes position. Now one request, whenever you revise, right, be absolutely bindas. There is no problem to actually speak even while learning, right? It's like as I said yesterday also that as if me and you are talking directly, it is like one to one talk. So wherever you are, don't worry about anyone because at times my neighbors also, they say that he's crazy, right? Yes, I, I put the music at quite a good volume, right? And, and then I, I speak certain things which I really want to learn, right? It, it, it's, it's so amazing because you are in your own world. And don't worry about, don't worry much about anyone else, right? It is like you who has to improve. The third lobe, right, we'll, we'll come to that temporal lobe, that temporal lobe later, right. First, let's finish those who are so appealing. Occipital, right, occipital is the super smart, right. The name itself is so nice, occipital and see these are the specs, right. So, I, I write C like this, right, it is a stylish frame, right, it means it's partially frameless specs, it is for vision. It is for vision. So occipital, though, we don't even have to write. We just write it like this, right? And here are our specs. So occipital is for vision. So third lobe down, right? So we have understood frontal, parietal, occipital. Here comes the final one, the temporal one. The temporal, this much piece, this much, this much, you have to actually, I have written it in a small area, you have to write it in a full page, big page, full, full page, right? Don't worry about the trees at this point of time, that page is important, right? So on center line, just write temporal, right? And then that E, this E is for ears. That means it is for hearing because temporal is so important. Well, temporal is here, so is here, so it is near to the ears, so well, brain won't feel like that. Yes, it has to be. It has to travel so much. You might say that eyes are here and occipital is here, but at the base of the brain, you'll see that immediately it gets connected. Right? We'll we'll see that. Right now, we are watching the brain from the top. Right? From the top. And L. L is for language. Hmm. This is important. And learn it in this order. So what you can do is put one here, then two here, because this is the order of learning in the way even the brain understands. If someone is unable to hear, his language won't be developed because what if he's not hearing anything to so then how language can develop and think of you as a kid, right? Who taught you that language? No one. But after few years, you were speaking fluently your mother tongue because you were simply relying on listening and then learning. So it was the temporal lobe which was constantly in action. So ear, language. And then when you start understanding the language, then your, your facial expressions, they start changing. You know, because it's like that one, one person was running and he said that, why are you running? He said, I want to hit that person. He said, why? Why you really want to hit that person? So he said that he told me hippopotamus before three years. So they said, and, and now you are going to hit him. He said, yes, because today I went to zoo and I saw how the hippopotamus looks like. So that's the thing that when you understand the language, 
then there is change in the facial recognition and the facial expression so this is the third thing that is the facial recognition it's like when we start identifying we start relating and how do we relate that is the memory which is short term to long term otherwise if we see anyone and we forget but if that is appealing to us so it is the limbic system which is associated with emotions so something which is called as the falling in love right at the first sight is it really so is it really so falling in the love at the first time yeah why not it is exactly because that particular feature that face that appeals so much that it has created those vibes into your limbic system that is into your emotions and then immediately it's a temporal lobe make this thing permanent and then even after years together still you remember that person with same clarity you know it is because things have been converted into long term memory that's the reason now you will not forget temporal lobe <laughs> okay so important okay moving on to the frontal view frontal view is quite simple plain but here is something which is coming out right smell its importance right it is so important you have to smell it's important because that's your smell sensation or it is the olfactory system these are the olfactory lobes all your senses right smell smell they are associated with it otherwise the rest of the area well obviously this is the frontal view right we are watching it from the front so this is the frontal view and yes on the top because parietals they were on the top so that would be the parietal lobe this would be the frontal lobe and here is our smart temporal lobe good okay let's invert the brain now we are watching it from the base very clear right very clear things are good what is new basal view right as if yeah olfactory <laughs> yeah but it doesn't apply to studies first sight law well with what what passion you you study trust me after some time you will actually it it would happen that you will fall in love because see you have to think from that perspective and and say when we say that it is the we say that love you heartily and now if you are reading liver so then say it love you hepatically now imagine the extent of love which is increased from few grams to kilograms right how massive it is and then you start studying the hepatic system you start learning the liver because now you have associated with something so interesting you'll never forget it right okay uh yeah there was a question that is gaira and sulkai are they associated with intelligence well this is this is a very very bit of controversial question but this is true this is true today also in british museum in london there the brain of albert einstein it is there and they actually say that the number of sulkai and garai they are much more as compared to any of the normal human being and it is said that more you utilize your brain now what utilization is let's say you are a super cardiothoracic surgeon right you are a super cardiothoracic surgeon and you are doing say five open heart surgeries every day now will it take you to a higher level of intelligence well sorry to say but no no you already have known that skill set now it is not at all a stress to you so in that case your brain will say that okay this is a peanut for me it might be an extraordinary thing for others but it is easy for you you are doing that skill effortlessly so that won't lead to increase in intelligence right it is that's why i said that whatever you do whatever you do definitely get involved into any of the other subject because the way you will improve in it you will also improve in this subject also meditation works precisely in fact you have hit the bull's eye the book which i am reading in the altered state 
meditation is the third thing and i am seriously coming up with something very important very nice for you because what i'm i i am really i i can't see you guys but i can only feel you right and and from your questions none of the your questions they are they are out of the way right they are all all so proper so i'm seriously planning even for this meditation part also but but what happens is that all the schedules they become so tight right so sometimes as i said that yes it was my mistake i just forgot to tell you about that uh, mbbs timetable regarding how to plan it okay but i'm i'm thinking about it on wednesday that is today is monday tuesday wednesday day after tomorrow at night 10 o'clock right so so i'll i'll definitely be creating the link today only right and i'll post it so that we all meet at 10 o'clock and uh, we'll talk about that mbbs timetable okay 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 <laughs> all right so now let's come back to this this is the basal view and say that's the olfactory bulb right that is for the smell and here it is the optic track right see how nicely situated the optic track is and now we come across hey, here is our smart right temporal lobe and these are the two newcomers pons and hippocampus pons and hippocampus just look at them right these are the pons that's the pons and next to it is hippocampus okay and yeah that is cerebellum chhota dimag right from the lateral side crystal clear right that's the frontal lobe that's the parietal lobe that's the occipital lobe and this one is the temporal lobe so temporal lobe occipital lobe that's the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe let's take a section of it right now this section it is which section it is the sagittal section why sagittal because we said that coronal section was like a crown right it was like a crown and sagittal section was dividing the body into right side and the left side so here it is we took a section and we come across this fascinating word right here is the frontal lobe we know this it is for fine decisions right parietal processes position yes in 3d i'll just write 3d and, and it will strike yes things are good occipital lobe right this much is enough right that this much is uh should i zoom out the screen okay now just a minute in fact it is full screen right now okay olfactory bulb is known to you okay here is the cerebellum so it has got antenna and posterior lobe interesting thing is now coming up this one see there is a lateral ventricle that's lateral ventricle this lateral ventricle is a space and it is in this space you'll be having csf cerebrospinal fluid right this cerebrospinal fluid which provides nutrition and it is for the so many other functions but see such important structures as such brain is pretty complicated but when it comes to say its features its function they are very precise first thing first we'll watch this corpus callosum right corpus callosum corpus callosum is like a super express highway because your brain is divided into two parts right side and the left side right uh which area okay you want to zoom is it is this what we are talking about sorry this one right this one
So this is, this is corpus callosum. So what corpus callosum is doing, corpus callosum is a super express highway between right side and the left side, connects both of them. Then, see this. These are some important nuclei. Putaman, Caudate, right? So, just see that their names are there. Right now, I'm not writing much about it. Right? Step by step, we'll come to that. But here is someone who is telling that, well, you are forgetting me. Who am I? Right? You talked about uptake. You talk about olfactory. Who am I? Right? Who am I? Right? It was one of the movie of Jackie Chan. Right? Who am I? It was a nice movie. So, who is who is this fellow? This is, yeah, that is pituitary. Exactly. Right? It's the pituitary. Yes, it has got adaptive function. So, that's pituitary, right? The master gland, it is the pituitary gland. So, we'll be relying very much on pituitary about many of the functions. Okay, let's, and here is the medulla oblongata because it is oblong shaped, right? And amygdala and hippocampus, all those areas, let's see that. What this hippocampus is? This hippocampus, right? Though the name looks like that hippopotamus, right? But it is the hippocampus. What it is handling? It is handling thermoregulation, temperature, right? It is handling temperature, temperature control of the body. Second, this is what I love the most. This is circadian rhythm. This circadian rhythm is what? That every morning if you wake up at 4 o'clock, you don't have to put the alarm. You will automatically wake up. That is what is called as the circadian rhythm or also called as the biological clock. Biological clock. In some of my sessions, I said that those don't look, don't watch your cell phone at least 15 minutes before you go to sleep. The eliminance of that, that uh, cell phone, right? that is so high, it is equivalent to the level of sunrise. Its luminance level is equivalent to sunlight. So your brain feels that, well, it is the morning, it is such a bright sunshine, why to sleep? And unnecessarily, even at 1 o'clock, even at 2 o'clock, right? you are in bed, but you are tossing yourself. You actually don't get a good sleep. Right? I'll plan that. So, this is what is called as the biological clock. Right? So, circadian rhythm or the biological clock, it is meant for this function. It regulates major endocrine hormones. Right? Regulates major endocrine hormones. And how it will do? What it will do is, hippocampus will tell it to pituitary that, okay, release this hormone and pituitary is that which is having all the stocks with it and will say copy that and it will start releasing that hormone and that hormone will carry out rest of the function right the pineal gland which is situated it is still at a very higher level it is also called as the seat of intelligence and it said that early morning right there are secretions from pineal gland which will actually improve your very high intellectual levels right very important gland and it's a very small gland, but its importance is really good. In fact, in meditation, they say that there are seven chakra in a body, right? So, the sahasra or the highest, which is also called as the spiritual connection, that is like pineal gland. Because behind, behind every chakra, when they say in meditation, you focus on your third eye, a question is asked many times that where is, have you seen the third eye? Well, you dissect it immediately, just this much inside there is pituitary. So that is all those glands, all those chakra, they are associated with one gland. And that gland is, is your endocrine gland, which is carrying out so many important functions. True. So that's the reason that many times 
that religion is associated with science in a very precise way. But when you associate it with religion, then you don't have to explain it because all our great forefathers, right, those ancestors, they were very smart. They were knowing that if you we'll try to explain everything in a scientific way, people won't understand. But if you associate it with religion, so yes, it becomes easy for them to follow. Right? That's why many times they say yeah, that you do those fasting, upvas. What's that? It is nothing but you are telling your digestive system that take a break. Right? When one, one very nice thing that is now to, there are electric crematoriums. As soon as the person is dead, immediately he is put into that electric crematorium and then it does the whole thing. But way back when, when the woods were used, right, and the dead body is lying over here, then the fire which was put on that body, that was always on the toes. That was always on the toes. It was never on the, now, now the guy is no more. Right? So it will it really matter you wherever you ignite him? But no, it was like put on toes. The reason is that when the body dies, there is rigor mortis. Right? Remember, very listen, very nice reason. Rigor mortis. This rigor mortis, it starts from the face, from eyes, it starts traveling, starts traveling, and then it goes to the shoulder, then goes to the chest, abdomen, as it follow, follows down, right? finally it reaches to the toes. Now when it reaches to the toes, that means the, it is end. Now even if there is some life left out, that means rigor mortis will not start. That person is in deep coma, but when you put the fire on his toes and fire, the burning sensation is the most painful sensation, so it will trigger it will trigger that impulse and in case if there is any life left out, right person would say, hey, I am back. That's okay. People would say, bhoot, bhoot and they will run away. But yes, there has been so many incidences that person, right, he came on those, those shoulders and he came back walking on his feet. So that's the reason. So every everything associated, it has got some scientific reason. Okay. Here is the cerebellum. Cerebellum is for precision and balance, right? So that's why whenever you swim, whenever you cycle, say thanks to cerebellum. Say thanks to your chota dimag, right? This is swimming and cycling because it is the precision and the balance. It looks like that, okay, cycling is what's the big deal in that. But for brain, think it like when, when brain is telling that half of the body weight should be on left side, half of the body weight should be on the right side and then now put only that much pressure that this cycle moves and when it is moving, whatever is coming from the, whatever is in front, right? The optics, your optical system, they are sending the information to him that, okay, we are just, say, 10 meters away from that person, right? We are not supposed to, say, crash. All those decisions, so these are like sensory inputs, right? They are via spinal cord, they come to cerebellum and then brain, cerebellum would send it even from the motor input when it will say, okay, legs are telling that I have put this much pressure, right? All these things will come up and the final verdict would come from the cerebellum and that is fine-tuned motor abilities. This fine-tuned motor abilities they, they can be developed because it is in the form of muscle memory. That's why some of the exercises, right? So when, when you say, say all those, you, if you know about kata, kata is those martial art maneuvers, right? So when you do those martial art maneuvers, so when you are moving your hand in specific direction, right? When you take a stance for the punch, and then you move your hands like this, right? So it is like, I'll, I'll just take it. You move your hands like this and at that point, second hand, it should go back, right? So when you do this thing rhythmically, actually you, it is like a warm up for your entire exercise. Okay? As it is involving multiple senses. That's why they are also called as the compound exercise. These are called as the compound exercise. And cerebellum, it stores it as a muscle memory. This is the reason that even if you have learned swimming way back, 10 years back, I throw you in water right now, within seconds you will start swimming. 
it won't happen that you you have forgotten it you you can never forget you can never forget cycling you can never forget swimming those skill sets once learned they will remain forever moving on to the brain stem brain stem so this was our brain and then that the stem right that's the stem so it has got the midbrain and the medulla right midbrain and medulla this midbrain midbrain it is eye ear plus consciousness therefore wake and sleep cycle it is what it handles say it is in close association with it is in close association with our hippocampus right so when we say that yes i am feeling very sleepy it is the hippocampus who is controlling everything but hippocampus will say that i can just tell that that midbrain let this guy sleep right midbrain would say yes the message has come from the hippocampus that it's time to go to sleep but then if there are other inputs and those inputs are keeping you awake so then it will ignore that message from hippocampus hippocampus would say okay fine you are not listening to me forget now i'll not tell you right it means hippocampus has modified its circadian rhythm that circadian rhythm is modified and the day you it happens now your new rhythm has been set to say few hours late and that's what really happens when you don't get proper sleep till 2 o'clock 3 o'clock in the night and then next morning you are not that fresh something what happens in that jet lag jet lag your circadian rhythm is completely disrupted it's a time to go to sleep it has to be dark and it is a bright sunshine in the new york and now obviously you are not supposed to sleep but your hippocampus is not yet tuned to that hippocampus will say are go to sleep go to sleep no this is what is called as the jet lag and that's why it affects your decision right it affects your fine decision because every every lobe is affected at the same time your temporal lobes are affected temporal lobes will say ki yes we i i know that i'm supposed to remember this and convert it to long term but but right now it is a low energy state 72 hours and that's the beauty of your brain 72 hours and the jet lag effect is gone and now you are set into that new environment that's why 72 hours it is called as the magical phase for human body it is a magical phase right stick to any good habit even bad habit right for brain good or bad habit is a habit but you stick to that any of the good habit right for 3 days and you will find that it is easy to follow and i really congratulate the person who deleted his games from his cell phone that i was so happy this is really really good right and do do let me know if you are following because i i really want that right because when you write that yes i did that i slept for so many hours i, I, I and just before sleep i did this i did that i try to answer all questions but when you guys don't write do write something because that's the only motivation for me right when you write something i i i'm very happy i feel that yes someone is following it so please do write something because see over here you are so disciplined but in the comments you can write down about how you felt right or you can even write what you really want anything more is needed just let me know right because we are meeting so regularly i'll take i'll include even that part also okay so in brain stem we have mid brain which is for wake sleep cycle consciousness and then there is pons right it is in this order only mid brain pons and medulla pons is for posture so good pons is for posture and the facial expression because facial expression is also nothing but a sort of posture right posture means it is with upper limb lower limb and the way you stand the way you sit that is a posture and the way your face is sitting that is your facial posture that is facial expression so technically speaking they both are same it is just the game of muscle contraction how much muscle is contracting for that specific shape by the way 
right? We are talking about pons. This is the posture, facial expression, right? And it was associated with one more lobe also, and that was temporal lobe, right? Temporal lobe. It was for facial recognition. So here it was for facial recognition, which is coming from the memory. And when you see someone's face, you smile automatically comes. This is another proof that this temporal lobe must be very closely associated with the pawns, right? So when you see something, you see someone, and then there is a smile. Or if you don't like, right, then there will be anger. Medulla, lifesaver. It's a lifesaver. Blood pressure, breathing, swallowing. Can't live without it. And that's the reason a very painful thing is that in case if anything goes wrong to our heart, right, if anything goes wrong to our heart, and in case if there is hypoxia, right, if there is hypoxia, lack of oxygen, it is this poor guy, medulla, who is immediately affected and when this medulla is affected right yeah that's the answer so when the medulla is affected medulla will lead to it has got the respiratory centers so it will lead to this right so even in presence of air person can't breathe because it is controlling all the chest muscles all the breathing muscles so even if there is air person won't be able to take that oxygen in and that's what is called as the hypoxic death so it's not so that heart attack it just kills the heart it kills the brain also and unfortunately both these structures they are irreversible their damage is irreversible once damaged it cannot be reverted okay so here is our one more concept. We said that these are what? These are cell bodies. right? And this was what? Exon. Right? And then there were various parts of it. Right now we are not worrying about it. So cell and exons. Bus. We just remember this. So in brain, right? Outer side it has got cell bodies and inner side it has got exons. So that is also called as medulla and it is also called as the white matter. It is the inner portion. Outer one is also called as the gray matter and it is also called as the cortex. How boring. How boring. Right? Just said and who remembers this? How to remember? See here also there is one interesting thing. Outer gray cortex cell everything is curved right everything is curved right oh outer this is the g gray matter it is cortex is c and this round cell bodies now see your confidence otherwise if you try to cram it becomes difficult but now you can say so confidently that the outer side of the brain which is also called as the gray matter and it has got the cell bodies and person would feel how confident he is. Right? Kya confidence? We remembered it like this. And over here, by God's grace, see, exon, you write A like this. Right? A like this. All straight lines. Medulla, like this. White matter, you like write like this. Inner, you like write like this. So everything is straight line. Here, everything is in a straight line. And here, Everything is curvy linear. Right? Everything is curvy. So easy. So now you don't have to remember it. The moment it is said that yes, we are dealing with inner aspect of the brain and we say inner aspect, yes, that would be called as the medulla. And it is the white matter which is over here. And why? Because there are exons. So this gave us the idea that those exons, they are white. Right? Those exons, they are white. And the outer side, this outer side, which is also called as the gray matter. Why it is gray matter? Because there are cell bodies and we'll also call it cortex. Good. 
<laughs> right? And when it comes to spinal cord, right, there is a small, small change, a small change. And that change in spinal cord is where it is reverse than brain. Why it is reverse than brain? In brain, the outer, outer was gray matter. That means there were cell bodies. While in case of spinal cord, the outer portion is white matter. White matter means over here you have got exons. What are exons? Exons are for communication. Right? So in case of spinal cord, it happens like from every side the information is coming and centrally it is processing. Right? So this is the gray matter. Gray matter which is having cell bodies. These are the cell bodies where the CPU is there. CPU is processing. Right? That is what is happening. And that's how you all remember. So remember these things always. And when you'll remember this, which lobe will you call? Right? Which lobe will you call? Which lobe? Right? You'll call your your because we'll take a break for half an hour and then we'll be coming back with the second part of this so just before we leave which lobe temporal lobe yes right it is the temporal lobe which will convert the short term memory into the long term memory excellent okay guys we'll be back exactly after half an hour right at 12 o'clock have a good cup of coffee and in case if you want to have your lunch make it fast we'll meet exactly after half an hour thank you and bye bye see you soon half an hour